For a long time we've assumed that forensics can be utterly relied on to prove someone's guilt or innocence. Unfortunately, it's becoming increasingly clear that forensics aren't always 100% reliable. The whole issue of forensics is, is a very fraught one because we've become accustomed to thinking that we can rely on it utterly. We've been seduced by CSI and programs like that. On TV, a string of scientists always looking at their computer screens saying it's a match. Well, it doesn't always work like that, and it very rarely works like that. And in recent years, there have been a number of reviews of forensics around the world, which have called into question a lot of the techniques that have previously been relied on, things like blood pattern analysis, bite marks, hair analysis, fingerprinting, and shoe prints. Unfortunately, in the New Zealand courts, we've seen some very novel forensic science that hasn't been tested elsewhere in the world, and particularly in the Mark Lundy case, there were tests done that have never been done in any other court, in any other trial, anywhere in the world, and were used for the first time here. This caused a lot of controversy and debate during the trials, and I think everyone agrees that what you have to do is have the experts, the scientists, have all this novel science peer reviewed before it ever turns up in a court in New Zealand. The courts and the public want black and white from forensic scientists, but scientists don't work in black and white. They work in areas of grey, and it just depends the shade of grey, essentially, that they are able to, to comment on in court. 